Hello YouTube and today I'm finally bringing you the Astrox AT&D review. Sorry for the long wait once again. The reason that like it takes me so long to actually put out each review is because it just takes me so long to make it. Just like look at the quality. Here we have the Astrox AT8D, which is another iteration of the Astrox AT8 rackets. You might know that Yonex also put out the Astrox AT8S, which is for like skill players and like front court domination and doubles. The Astrox AT8D is made for backcourt domination and also for singles. Personally, I prefer the Astrox AT8D simply because like I play more backcourt doubles and I just enjoy like power play more than speed play. Although I did enjoy the Astrox AT8S a lot. If you want me to do an in-depth comparison between these two Astrox 88s and also the Astrox 77 and the Astrox 99 when it comes out, make sure to smash the like button and also comment down below in the uh, comment section. The Astrox 88D for me personally, I think is more well-rounded for doubles and singles, whereas I think the Astrox 88S is mainly focused more for doubles play. Okay, so sometimes in my reviews I say a racket isn't good for singles, for example, like on the Astrox AT8S review, but you do need to remember that there are custom rackets out there for top players, for example, like Victor Axelsson and also Lee Chong Wei and Lin Dan. And like their rackets may vary from the retail ones. What I'm actually reviewing right now is actually the retail ones that you guys can access and not the IP rackets. If you want more information on IP rackets, simply follow my Instagram at poisoncobra.ken and just click on my post about after using this racket for quite a bit and getting used to it, I really really enjoy this. There's a slight learning curve for this racket for some odd reason. I think it's just because I just used the Astrox ATS which is a lot quicker and it's just a completely different style of play and then I just suddenly switched to the Astrox AT8D. Um, it took me about like a month to get used to it but I wasn't really playing regularly so it might be because of that. But basically this racket, it is very very powerful and very very quick. So the Astrox 88D, how can I describe it? It's basically like the Astrox 77 plus the Voltrix Z Force 2 plus the Dura Z Strike all combined into one. It's just crazy, like the speed is incredible. So with this racket, clears are absolutely effortless and they're so accurate, okay? There's this heavy punch behind every single clear and you don't even have to really use any strength to it. It just carries the racket by itself. Drop shots, they're really, really accurate. However, I do find on the Astrox ATS there's a bit more touch to drop shots and you can get more like precise and like steeper and like closer to the net drop shots. This one just has a bit more extra weight. So if you want that kind of like closer to the net kind of shot, you do have to hold back a little bit more. Smashes are absolutely incredible on this racket. Like other than the Vulture Z Force 2, I haven't really seen a racket that can smash like this. It's just so satisfying, you know, the sweet spot is absolutely huge on this racket. Although I have it strung at like 30 pounds of tension with a really, really thin string. I'll put the string name on the screen right now so you can go check it out. Like with higher tensions, your sweet spot tends to be slightly smaller. And even though I strung it at 30 pounds, it feels like it's basically the whole racket. And miss hitting with this racket is kind of hard. Although, it doesn't mean that this racket does not have touch. Touch is awesome. If you do miss hit, you know where you've hit it on the racket. It's just really, really easy to tell where the shot is going as well. Drives are really, really good. However, a lot of people actually struggle with this racket at first, like me, uh, because they don't realize that you should be using the energy boost cap, which is incorporated into this racket. Basically, on the racket right now, um, I put my grip up really, really high over the energy boost cap so I can grip onto it. But some people have it like, ungripped and exposed so that I can show you. I'll just show you a diagram on the screen right now. So, when you actually use the energy boost cap to its like, full potential and actually put your thumb there, when you drive and defend, it is so quick. But because this racket is like so head heavy and it's just generally a very, very weighted racket compared to a lot of other rackets. Like when you hand it to other people, they'll be like, oh damn, this racket's heavy, why do you like it? But once you actually like use the racket, you can feel the rotational generator system at work and the help of the energy boost cap just like reduces the leverage so you can get more precise shots and then you can just like switch your grip back to the back when you um, like do smashes and like overhead shots. So, this brings me on to the next point as well. This racket is actually an advanced racket. Um, it's no good giving this racket to like a beginner or an amateur to use and expect that they can get like great results from it. First of all, especially with the 3U weight, it's quite weighted and it's hard to handle. 
Second of all, this racket has a stiff shaft and that means you have to generate the power from your own good technique rather than just rely on the snap of like a flexible racket shaft. Um, flexible racket shafts are good for beginners to generate power really really easily however it does mean that you lose control and touch sometimes so if you're trying to do like those pinpoint line smashes for example with a flexible racket you just don't know where it's going and it's really really hard to control. Defense with this racket in singles is very very easy because like of the rotational generator system it just feels like an even racket when you actually go to the side line to get those lateral defenses. Um, doubles, it's just so quick, you know what I'm saying? People just say, how are you defending this fast with like a heavy racket? Net shots, okay, they're great, but they're not as good as the Astros 88S, of course. The Astros 88S is built for speed play, so especially when you cut off those like mid-court shots or like at the frontal court, it's much better on that racket. However, this racket does not lack at it at all. There's still a lot of control, but it's just you have to have like a stronger technique to kind of control the racket a bit better. It just feels like the Z Force 2, but just slightly easier to handle. So with backhands, it basically incorporates into like other shots as well. But I'm just gonna say backhands are really, really controlled and easy on this racket. Like, but you do have to generate it from your own technique. So you can't just be like, yo, I'm just gonna buy a 200 pound racket and just do that, and then the shot will just go wherever you want. It's just not gonna happen. But this racket just has a really really nice feel. I feel like there's a lot of punch behind the backhand. On the Astros ATS, there's more control on the backhand, but there's less of that punch. So let's talk about the actual feel of it. So with every single racket, there's a slightly different feel. How I would compare this is actually, it's very very similar to the Z Force 2 feel. So with Voltric rackets, there's this very very solid feel, and I really really enjoy that. With Dura rackets, although there's a punch, it doesn't really feel as solid. This racket has basically the speed of a duo racket and just has the punch of a ball trick. It's absolutely awesome. That's why my favorite series is actually the Astrox racket. I really look forward to getting the Astrox 99 when it comes out. So if you want a review on that as well, make sure to double smash that like button. Okay, that makes you unlike it. Don't do that. Just smash it, okay? Make sure it's liked and comment down below. I've talked about the amazing smashes from this racket, which makes it automatically amazing for backcourt domination and doubles. Singles, surprisingly, although this racket is actually advertised for doubles, it's really, really enjoyable to use in singles. And I can definitely say, at the moment, this is definitely my favorite racket. It suits all my needs as a hard hitter and also like a very, very controlled player. So, this racket has a glossy finish, just like the Astros 88S. For some reason, glossy finishes just tend to chip slightly easier than matte finishes. I don't know why, but it is just that. Uh, for me, I think I prefer the 3 as it has a lot more weight. And because it has a rotational generator system, you get a lot more steeper, it's like more power uh, with this one. But for you, you won't get that much power as the 3 because uh, it's a very light racket. But this one is very heavy, and yet it's very powerful. This racket has a stiff shaft. The shaft is made from NAMD and also high modulus graphite. The frame also uses high modulus graphite, however tungsten and nanometric is also used, which is not used in the shaft. So the model I have here is the 3U G5 edition. G5 is like a smaller grip size than G4 and 3U is slightly heavier than 4U. So the recommended string tension for the 3U weight model is 21 pounds to 29 pounds of tension. Whereas the recommended strain tension for the 4U models is 20 to 28 pounds of tension. The average weight for like a 3U racket is around 88 grams and the average weight for like a 4U racket is actually 83 grams. So 5 grams might actually not seem a lot but when you're actually using the racket and especially such an advanced racket you will feel the massive difference. 3U is slightly harder to maneuver and handle because it's simply more weighted so you need a stronger like physical being, like physical self, and also you need a stronger technique as well. The 4U model will appeal to more people and they'll find it easier to use it because it's just quicker to handle. However, the 3U model will have more power than the 4U simply because there is more weight behind the 3U so you can get more powerful shots. The 3U is also harder to find for these Astrox rackets for some reason, like most retailers in Europe actually only sell the 4U edition. Long Tan actually stops these like rarer rackets like the G5 and they also stop these rackets at a much lower cost than basically any other place. So 
The recommended retail price of this racket is close to £200 in the UK, which is absolutely ridiculous for a racket. But I know like loads of people can't be paying £200 each for uh, a racket, so I recommend you www.lt328.com. They sell these rackets for only close to like £100. And they're all genuine, that's the best thing, and they offer worldwide shipping, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world. For me, personally, I have quite a small hand, so G5 fits my hand perfectly, whereas like most other European guys, they prefer like the G4 or something like that. So the thing is, I think that if you get like a smaller grip size, you can grip it until like you find the perfect grip size for you. Whereas like, if you start off with like a G4, you can't really go down to a G5, you can't like shave off the wood or something like that. Also, let me just clarify something. Like right now, you can see my racket's gripped up all the way up there, and you can't really see like the uh, energy boost cap. So around that area near the energy boost cap, like on the shaft, sometimes on rackets it says SP. I'm not really sure whether this one says SP or not. I don't think so. But some rackets they say SP. Um, SP actually means Singapore. It doesn't mean South Pacific. It has been confirmed by Yonex. So the two-letter code is actually a country code. So. It actually marks where the racket is meant to go in the world. All the top end rackets like the Astrox 88S and the Astrox 88D, they're all made in the same factory in Japan. Lower end models, um, they're made in like China or something like that. The country code doesn't mean like they're made in Singapore or something. The country code simply means where the racket is meant to go in the world. So sometimes people might be saying, oh, I want a JP racket because it's better quality. That's just completely false. So since this racket has a stiff shaft, it does mean that this racket will require an advanced technique because stiff shafts you need to generate the power through a good technique. Stiffer rackets also give you a better touch which leads to better control so when you actually hit the shuttle upon impact you can feel the kind of vibrations. I know it sounds kind of scientific but when you play a lot you will know. You will know where the shuttle is going and yeah you'll know which part of the racket you've hit. So if you hit the sweet spot which is in the middle you'll know that if you hit the side you'll definitely know that, like which side as well, it's awesome. But this racket, it is actually very, very similar in lots of different traits to the Astrox 88S. And you might be like, so what is it actually different then? Well, one of the key differences is that this racket has a snapback zone in the middle of the racket. So this part actually flexes like around the middle upon impact to give you a bit more power and a bit more like of an explosive shot. Whereas the Astrox 88S has a flex point at the T-joint to give the racket a bit more hold and a bit more flex so when you're at the front court you can hold the shuttle longer to kind of place it to where you want. This one just simply wants like explosive boom 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 that kind of power. But that doesn't mean that this racket isn't controlled at all, it's absolutely amazing. Another key difference between this racket and also the Astrox 88S is this racket is actually 5 millimeters longer than the Astrox 88S. Well it might just sound like the 5 grams difference between the 3U and the 4U model, but these small figures actually translate to totally different play styles and like a totally different feel when you're using it in game. The Astrox 88S is slightly shorter so it has like less of a leverage so you can move the racket quicker, get those like fast cutout shots and like frontal court control. Whereas for this one, it's slightly longer to give you a bit more leverage to get a bit more power and like a bit more control for those overhead shots. There is something called the energy boost cap. I already mentioned the energy boost cap already, but with the energy boost cap, it's kind of gripped up at the moment on my racket because I just use it so much and I don't want my hand to slip off the racket. But on the screen right now, you can see a diagram which shows the kind of construction of it. So the energy boost cap is really, really awesome because it has two different things. The first thing is it has the kind of like ergonomic thumb kind of print area for you to hold it properly, get a grip on it and just kill the front court net shots and stuff like that. Normal kind of control caps, for example, like on the Astro 77 work really well as well, but I just really prefer the kind of ergonomic feel. It's just really, really satisfying. So if you actually rotate around like the top of the cone, I can't really show you on my racket at the moment because once again, it's grip top. On the diagram of the screen, you can see that some parts it dips lower, some parts it goes higher. So for the parts that dip lower, it basically allows the racket to flex there more. So it gives you a bit more power and whip. Whereas the parts that go a bit higher, it stops the racket from flexing in that direction as much, therefore kind of controlling your stroke and the movement of the racket more to give you a cleaner and more accurate shot in the end. 
This racket is an Astrox racket and all Astrox rackets are famous for their rotational generator system. So personally, I don't really agree with Yonix's kind of pseudoscience explanation of the rotational generator system, but basically they have two sticks. Uh, one of them isn't like weighted, another has like weights on the end of it and they just pivot in the middle. And yeah, apparently it's meant to like represent that in an Astrox racket because the weighted one gives you a bit more speed. It's just really inaccurate because no one holds their racket in the middle of the shaft and does that to play badminton like if you do that yeah you're not normal people know you hold the racket down here the actual kind of movement is like this you know what i'm saying so it's just completely different from yonix's explanation but the rotational generator system consists of three parts a weight on the top here a weight on the t-joint and also a counterweight on the bottom of the grip what does this actually do and how does it differ from other rackets because surely even balanced rackets like the arc saber just has like counterweights already but with arc saber rackets they are evenly weighted along the whole racket to make it an even balanced racket so when you're holding the arc saber and you swing you can feel that everything feels even on top with the astrox 88d and the other astrox rackets it, when you hold it and you swing it actually feels head heavy and the reason for that is because you're holding the counterweight on the bottom and you're simply allowing the top and also the T-joint kind of weight to work which gives you a bit more like kind of that head heavy punch and power. However, when it comes to defense, this racket is also very very quick, uh, quicker than the Voltric series. The Voltric series is like head heavy rackets with basically like no counterweight on the bottom. So like you've got good power in your overhead shots but handling for kind of defense is slightly lacking so with the Astrox series the counterweight on the bottom actually kind of cancels out the movement on the top due to some physics stuff and you can actually move it very very quickly to the side it feels even balanced when you're moving to the side it's really really weird so therefore I can say that the Astrox series is basically the Voltric and also like the Arc Saber and the Jura series all combined into one that's why the Astrox series is actually my favorite because it combines the power of the Voltric series which I really really love because of the Voltric Z Force 2 and it combines the speed of the Jura and Arc Saber series one added side note the Astrox series rackets all tend to feel quite weighted compared to other rackets and yeah when people first pick up my Astrox rackets they're like oh my gosh this is heavy like but in reality it isn't actually that much heavier or like heavier at all compared to their racket the only reason that I actually feel so heavy is because of the Astrox way of putting the weights along the rackets this racket uses nanometric so earlier I talked about having nanometric in the frame up here so what is nanometric so nanometric is simply this high-end revolutionary material that Yonix uses for basically all their high-end Yonix rackets for quite a while now it is meant to be much lighter than like conventional carbon whilst retaining its stiffness I don't need to go into like extreme details so therefore it allows these rackets to be very very quick and very very powerful I talked about having NAMD in the shaft NAMD is one of those like kind of new things that the Astrox series has brought out with the Astrox 77 NAMD is this another kind of graphite and material that Yonix is using and I actually really really like this material because I do feel like the NAMD material that Yonix is using in these rackets give the racket a bit of whip but it's very 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 controlled like it's weird because it feels punchy like a Voltry racket but it also has the whip of like some dual rackets it's crazy like really you need to try these rackets in hand this racket has an isometric frame head well isometric rackets have been around for a long long time and what an isometric frame is is basically if you look at the racket it looks very very square so the diagram on the screen right now shows you the area that is meant to be for playing and that just simply increases the sweet spot size a sweet spot is basically the area where like the racket like hits best at there is also a new grommet pattern and construction on like most of the new yonix rackets um it's not really a new thing because they started introducing like new grommet and pattern constructions and even like the jura z strike which is released quite a long time ago now that if you think about it in 2018 this allows a bit more contact between the string and also the frame also it kind of reduces like the rubbing between the strings it makes your strings last longer in the first place um, unless you kind of like cut it by accident with the grommets while you're stringing and second of all it gives you a bit more string tension retention and third of all I just remembered it gives you a bit more 
of like a closer touch to the racket so when you actually hit the shuttle you can kind of feel it more also it also means there is more direct energy transfer so you could elicit more power from it on a lot of like the high-end yonix rackets they actually use something called a solid field core so have you guys picked up like a cheap badminton racket and when you hit it just doesn't feel like it's really really like solid like i'm trying to not use the word solid but that's the best word that i can use to describe it like it just feels weak the shuttle is basically pushing it back so the solid field core is this kind of inner construction that reinforces the frame of the racket and it cuts out miscellaneous vibrations so first of all it gives you a better touch so when you hit the shuttle you can like kind of feel it more and second of all it gives it a bit more of a punchy feeling so it feels more powerful and it will be more powerful and just generally more satisfying to use also what i found is the rackets that use the solid field core actually give you a bit more kind of like a resonating booming sound this racket uses the aero box frame the aero box frame is basically a combination of like the aerodynamic sharp kind of frame to give you like this kind of quick swing and quick maneuverability um, the box frame is basically this kind of blockier frame to give you a bit more punch and power this is actually different to like the dual optimum system found on dual rackets it's, it doesn't have like two frames like one sharp here and one blunt here it's not like that basically both sides are equal here but they just got the two frames like the aero frame and the box frame and they created a shape that was kind of in between so you get the benefits of both the powerful side and also kind of like the quicker side so this racket also has the newer kind of built-in t-joints by yonex they combine epoxy resin and also a foaming agent to this kind of lightweight plastic it makes the racket very very light and it's very 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 strong so it keeps up the solid feel of the racket if you look at like a lot of the new Yonix rackets and stuff like that you're just like they're all basically the same in terms of like the thickness of the shaft and yes they're basically the same on a lot of like the high-end models and a lot of people have actually forgotten about how slim these shafts are like oh my days like now that if you think of it like I can basically touch my two fingers together like if I squeeze I can it's that thin and I remember when the Voltrix Z Force 2 came out with an extra slim shaft and then everybody was like oh my days that is so slim like now all these rackets are basically that slim it's basically become this conventional thing with very very slim shafts like this it gives you a bit of like whip so you get a bit of power from it but the stiff material that they actually use in the shaft still gives you that control and touch so it's not just like one of those other cheaper rackets with like a like standard thickness shaft with like a very very flexible property it's not like that also i'd like to mention leong day leong day was actually involved in the research and development of the astrox 88 rackets both the astrox 88s and the d i forgot to mention it in the last review for the 88s and somebody reminded me i'm gonna put the comment on the screen right now but Leon Day was a Beijing gold Olympic medalist and also he's a former number one player. Right now he's recognised as one of the Yonix legends. The Astros 99 review will be coming out when I get my hands onto it. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to Long Tang's newsletter, make sure you do so on their website. They provide you information of like newest racket releases, all the top models and stuff like that when they restock. And the thing is, they provide that information for you guys all free of charge so make sure you check it out. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my Patreons, their names are on the screen right now. So on my Patreon, I post like exclusive content such as interviews with top players and also stuff from like my personal life. For example, like my GCSE results, which I just posted recently. And the thing is, all Patreons get extra early access to all my videos before they're released to the general public. So I know that some of you guys actually want to ask me questions directly and personally. So on my Patreon, there's my personal contact details where you can contact me like basically any time of the day. If I'm awake, I'll just basically respond to you. And yeah, there I offer personal Skype calls as well and also like handwritten letters to you guys. Just even one dollar a month will make a massive difference if lots of people do. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this review has helped you guys a lot. It took me so long to make it so it would help me out a lot if you just smash that like button and hit subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on future content. Well I basically asked for you to like and subscribe already but let me just do my normal outro. Please like, subscribe, and don't forget about my channel. Bye bye!